It is so incredibly calm today. Absolutely fantastic. It hasn't been this calm and I don't know how long. <laughs> it feels like forever. So very, very stoked to just, you know, get in the water and do some paddling. And yeah, just enjoy it to the max while it lasts. Oh, look at this shark coming towards us. That's awesome. So much wildlife. And you can see it all when it's this clear. This is how you recharge your batteries. This tranquil slice of paradise is the Dry Tortugas National Park just 60 miles past Key West, Florida. We'd actually spent a few weeks here before and totally fell in love. So we decided to sail back after our stop in Key West, where we made our final preparations for our big journey south for the season. Now Dallas and her crew were ready for our 300 mile crossing to Mexico. And all we needed to do was sit pretty in our little oasis here and wait for some good weather to begin our passage. We were in for a treat over the next few days full of sunshine, diving and dolphins. But just when you get too comfortable, the cruising life has a way of reminding you that it's not all sunshine and rainbows, as we were about to find out for ourselves. Six o'clock in the morning and the wind just came up uh, quite a lot from like literally zero knots to 25. I think a lot of people dragged. It's never fun to see people aground and it must be really stressful for them too, so... This is the story of Delos. A sailboat adventurizing around the world for the past 10 years. And now, we embark on our greatest adventure of all. Come join us as we take to the high seas and travel the world with the newest member of our crew. If you enjoy Delos videos, please subscribe it's a great way to support our channel. Somebody's sleeping in today. Little Nadia, it's time to wake up. You slept late. She sleeps like me with stuff on my head. Oh, I love you. Oh, there she is. Hello. Good morning. Oh, baby stretches. Oh, baby stretches. Wow. Oh. Sierra, it's Friday. We're going to go scuba diving. There she is. Let the day begin. The nugs is risen. We've decided to take the big boat out today for some diving because I think the weather is still real calm and it's going to be the whole day today. So uh, we haven't dove from Delos in so long. Uh, and I think we're going to go to two different sites and hopefully see some cool things. Let's go diving. Delos was anchored just to the south of Fort Jefferson in the Dry Tortugas National Park. Less than 1% of the national park is dry land, so to truly experience the dry tortugas, a dip below the surface is essential. The Great Florida Reef is the only living coral barrier reef in the continental US, and the third largest barrier reef system in the entire world. It's made up of over 6,000 individual reefs, aimed from 5,000 to 7,000 years old. This expansive reef system is home to an incredibly diverse population of wildlife, both big and small. Stoked there, bud? Oh, heck yeah. Ready for a rip? Ready for an underwater rip. An underwater rip? Yeah. Special kind. Oh yeah. So we're at this place called Texas Rock and the mooring is sort of right off the rock. We're gonna do a giant stride off the back and then we're gonna swim to the mooring line, go down the mooring line, and then we're gonna continue going like into the current. And then there's like some rock with good elevation change and a lot of uh, cool coral on this one. I think it should be an awesome dive.
The fish life at Texas Rock did not disappoint, but what really made this site unique was the variety of corals we found on a single site. With the major exceptions of elkhorn and staghorn, nearly every species of stony coral can be found here. The coral diversity is so amazing here that this area is even used as a coral growth monitoring station for ongoing research. How's that first dive? That first dive was really cool. It was like lots of cool coral and stuff. Yeah, a lot of coral. Yeah. And, uh, cool topography, right? Yeah. Like elevation changes. Lots of cool fish. And it seems pretty healthy. Yeah, so we're stoked. Yeah, I'm ready for the next one. What do you think about that first dive? I really liked it. I really enjoyed uh, diving with the new GoPro setup. So you're in macro world now. Yeah, so you can flip between like, you know, GoPro is very wide angle and then go from that to like macro mode with this flip door thing. And I really enjoyed it. We have to review the footage though, or preview or whatever you say. Yeah, because it could be all out of focus. It might be all the way slightly out of focus, mm -hmm. we don't know. So we have to see, but I really enjoyed it. It's right. beautiful. You ready for the wreck again? Yeah. Now we needed to move Delos about five miles to our next dive site, the Windjammer, an iron-holed sailing vessel that went down in 1907 and is now a bustling artificial reef that's home to an insane amount of wildlife. And lucky for us, we'd have some escorts to show us the way in. Windjammer again, huh? Yeah, I love this wreck. It's our uh, third dive on it. It's spectacular. Look at this crew we got. Solid crew. Sierra's helping. Baby nugget helper. Oh, it's really clear too. No, and it's starting to really flat Oh, it's gonna out. be a good dive, guys. Yeah. All right, should we do this? We shall. You guys ready? Yeah. After exploring the surrounding reefs for a bit, we made our way closer to the wreck itself, and we couldn't believe our eyes when this beefy fella came swimming by. This goliath grouper probably weighed more than Kaza, and it's only on the medium range of how big they can actually get. Their large, thick, and elongated bodies can grow up to 8 feet in length, tipping the scales at up to 800 pounds. The largest one ever caught while line fishing clocked in at 680 pounds, more than the weight of the entire crew of Delos put all together. When they're smaller, their predators consist of animals like barracuda, king mackerel, sandbar sharks, and even other groupers. But once they reach larger sizes, they can pretty much roam the ocean freely with no natural predators, making them pretty unafraid of little divers like us and allowing us to get up close and personal with this absolute beefcake of a fish. Just wanted to pause the video for a second to give a huge shout out to all our amazing patrons out there. You guys are really the ones that make all of this possible and there wouldn't be any videos without you guys. So if you enjoy the videos and would like to help support our project and keep the videos coming, please go ahead and check out patreon.com forward slash svdelo so you can see like all the gear and all the perks and everything else you get when you join our inner tribe. Awesome. Thanks so much and send you all much love. <laughs> Back to the video. Bye. Bye. Whoosh. Spirits were high after an amazing few days of pristine conditions and endless hours spent in the water. 
we even busted out our subwing that hasn't seen action in years. But as the breeze picked up, our dream anchorage turned into a bit of a nightmare. We got a dragger. <laughs> Somebody's moving. No. They're just driving with their anchor down no. and pulling it up as they go. No more dragging. Uh-uh. Yeah. Who is it? Those guys beside Calico oh, over there. No. They were pretty close and then they just drove forward. Let's give Bill a heads up. Yeah, maybe radio Bill. Say, Bill, we got a possible dragging situation. We got a dragger! Hi, we have a possible dragger that is on your side, just so you know. Of your port bow. They're on top of it, but keep aware. Let me have a take a look-see. We're holding though. Yeah? Yeah, Dallas is doing good. I set the anchor alarm on the B&G. Here we are, there's our arc. The only problem is we're in like pretty shallow water. So if we drag, we won't drag very far. That's <laughs> nice. <laughs> we're not gonna hit the beach, I can tell you that. <laughs> yeah, they are. Hell yeah, they are. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, should I horn yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, horn them, horn them, horn them. Can you horn them while I hold Sarah's? Horn them, You're dragging. Yeah. Sierra's doing the stern anchor watch. Yeah. One little sailor girl just out there in the wind. Ah! Just blowing mile 30 knots here. Ah! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Take that wind! All night long, we were hit by squalls with wind ranging from 20 to 30 knots. Delos' anchor was set well and we were holding, but we still decided to keep an anchor watch just in case. The wind had shifted, putting every boat in the anchorage one mishap away from ending up on a lee shore. And it's a good thing we did, because what happened next was absolutely terrifying. A catch was dragging right past us on our starboard side. We yelled, blew our horn, and shined lights on them, but they were fast asleep. By the time I put my jacket on and headed out in Maggie, they'd already struck the beach. It's never fun to see people aground and it must be really stressful for them too. So yeah, maybe Brian is over there. I just keeping an eye on our situation to make sure that nobody drags into us or anything like that. Their keel struck the ground first and then the bow of the boat was driven down by the wind and building swell which left them broadside to the weather. Each gust of wind and waves drove them further and further up onto the beach. To make matters worse, the spot where they went aground was the exact spot where the seaplanes beached themselves, and they were due to arrive in less than three hours, so it was a race against time. Luckily, I wasn't the only one awake that night, and two of our neighbors jumped in Maggie with me to try and help. It turns out that one of them, Steve, is actually a patron of ours, and we met a few times before. I was really grateful to have the help, as driving the dinghy while dealing with heavy anchors and line is really tough. Once we got over to the boat, we realized she was hard aground and her motor was out of commission. Right before they hit the beach, their dinghy painter went under the boat and got wrapped in the prop, leaving them completely at the mercy of the wind and waves. They also didn't have a windlass on board, so everything would need to be done manually with non-self-tailing winches. You have like a kedge anchor I could put out for you? Our plan was to use our spare fortress anchor and gigantic spool of line I carry on board just for situations like this. We dropped the anchor a few hundred feet off the beach in deep water. Okay, start bringing it in. And run the line through their bow roller and then to their biggest winch they had on deck. All right, you ready? We'd ready? then crank the line as tight as possible and literally drag the bow off the beach and up into the wind so she could at least take the weather on her bow instead of the beam, which would give us a fighting chance of getting her off the beach in one piece. I think they have it swung around a bit more into the wind now. This process is known as kedging. The plan was starting to work, and eventually we got her bow around into the wind. The problem was that she was still hard aground, and her keel was taking a pretty hard pounding with every wave that hit her. With some of the force now on the kedge anchor, we decided to pull up their anchor and chain by hand into Maggie and set it out as far as we could. We hoped that with a combination of winching on both anchors and Maggie tied balance stern to the hip of the boat under full power, we'd be able to get her afloat again. 
Well, I think they're making really good progress. Uh, they're about, I guess, 40 minutes in. That's really good. And it's good to see that uh, the boat is uh, kind of coming off. I'm just sitting out here kind of capture a little bit and just making sure that they don't need anything else. Another good news, the sun is about to come up, which is always nice so you can see a little bit more. It's definitely getting lighter really fast, so that's awesome. With a lot of heaving and winching, inch by inch, we moved her out of danger and into deep enough water so that she was floating on her own. Now all we had to do was clear a prop and hope she could motor up into the wind and re-anchor in a safe spot, making way for the seaplanes that were already on their way from Key West. All right, I think you guys should be good to sit and rest or whatever. You got two hooks down. Oh, we're all catches right here. All righty. Can I watch for all this? Yeah, you guys rest and uh, sort it out when it's done. What a morning, huh? That sucks. So what a clusterfuck of events, huh? Were they okay? The guys? Yeah. yeah I think they need some yeah. rest. Yeah. Yeah. I think but the only gonna, problem is they're right they're in front be of where the, where, the, where, the, where the seaplane. I know. So I told them, I was like, all right, the seaplane ties up right here. You guys can't, you know. You can rest, get some coffee, breakfast, but then you got to go re-anchor. Good job, Brian. Yeah. I'm really happy you had our neighbors helping cheer this. Yeah, it was really nice to have the help of Steve and Jesse. Yeah. And the dinghy. I'm so hungry. <laughs> it's a lot of exercise at 5.30 in the morning. Oh my gosh. Up next on Delos, we get our weather window and set out on a 300 mile sail for Isla Mujeres, Mexico. Bye guys, see you in Mexico. Yeah, so the wind... Ooh, geez. Why am I so wet? That's a bit better. I'm getting really tired. This year is gonna wake up soon. Ooh. <laughs> um. We have a what? curious Karen here. Is that glitch? No. She looks pretty. Yeah. Hold on to your cuppings. Can we get play? <laughs> I thought you were flipping me off. No. That's exactly what it looked no. like. I swear to <laughs> you're well, yo, you're <laughs> What a bastard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, play, please. Here we go. Let's see what we got here. Come on. <laughs> oh, oh my god, laser. look at the laser. Look at oh, the laser. Oh, shit. God damn it. Why am I always tripping all over me? Watch your guitar, dude. All right. Oh, that's your guitar. Sorry, man. <laughs> 